Now that we examined the definition of absolute value equations and the approach we should use to solve them, let's actually put it to practice and solve some absolute value equations. So the first problem I have is 3x minus 6, the absolute value of that expression is equal to 42. Let's also read this the way we should with our definition of absolute value. This means that the expression 3x minus 6, since I'm taking the absolute value of it, it is located 42 units from 0 on the number line. And the reason why this is helpful is if I were to sketch a number line, 3x minus 6 is located 42 units from 0. So that means I could go 42 units to the right, and 3x minus 6 would be located there. Or I could go 42 units to the left, which puts me at negative 42, and 3x minus 6 is located there. And now you can see why we split absolute value equations into two separate equations. Is because this expression, 3x minus 6, could be equal to negative 42. Or that 3x minus 6 could be equal to a positive 42. And we solve each one separately for it. Notice the expression 3x minus 6, nothing changes. It stays 3x minus 6. Only the 42 changes with the positive and the negative. And so to solve, you solve each one separately. What I'm going to do is add 6. So I get 3x equals negative 36. Divide by 3 x equals negative 12. Here I have at 6, 3x equals 48. And then we divide by 3, x equals 16. And so our answer is x equals negative 12 or 16. And we need to check to make sure that both of these work. And so I'm going to check by hand on these. You can use your calculator for it. And what we're going to do is plug in each one. So I have the absolute value of 3 times negative 12 minus 6. That should be equal to a positive 42. So let's check. 3 times negative 12 is negative 36. Negative 36 minus 6 is negative 42. So the absolute value of negative 42 is equal to 42 which is that a true statement? Well, the absolute value of negative 42 is positive 42. So 42 equals 42 is true. And so x equals negative 12 is a solution to this absolute value equation. So we do the same thing with 16. We have the absolute value of 3 times 16 minus 6 should be equal to 42. 3 times 16 is 48. 48 minus 6 is 42, so the absolute value of 42, is that equal to 42? And yes, it is. 42 equals 42. And so therefore, 16 is a solution. So both of these are true. Both of these are a solution for it. So here I checked by hand. Like I said, we can use our calculators to help us out. Now let's look at number 2. Number 2 is a little more complicated because our absolute value is not isolated by itself. So we need to do that first. Before you can even split it into two equations, the absolute value needs to be alone. So we need to take care of that. And the way you take care of that is you look and do the opposite operation of any addition or subtraction to remove the constants, and then the opposite operation of the coefficient. Remember, you do not distribute this coefficient in. It stays on the outside until we get rid of it by here, we would be dividing. So first thing you want to do, though, is get rid of any addition and subtraction outside the absolute value. So I would subtract 5 from both sides. And that gives me 4 times the absolute value of 2x minus 7 is equal to 4. Don't distribute the 4 in. And you can't do anything yet with the expression inside because it's protected by these bars. Because this absolute value bars are an operation for it. You can't just magically go in and grab something out. So now I'm going to get rid of my coefficient. 
by dividing both sides by 4. And now, if you take a look, my absolute value, the absolute value of 2x minus 7 is isolated all by itself. 4 divided by 4 is 1. So the absolute value of 2x minus 7 equals 1. That means this expression, 2x minus 7, and I'll look at again a visual concept to help some of you out, is located one unit from 0 on the number line. So here's 0. Well, one unit from 0 is either 1 or negative 1. And so 2x minus 7 is either located at negative 1 or 2x minus 7 is located at positive 1. And so that tells us how we split into our two equations. We get 2x minus 7 equals negative 1 or 2x minus 7 equals positive 1. Again, the expression inside the bars stays exactly the same. It's the number or expression that it's equal to that works with both the positive and the negative. And then you solve them separately. I would add 7, so 2x equals 6, and then divide by 2, x equals 3 for it. Add 7, 2x equals 8, divide by 2, x equals 4. So our answer that we would have so far is x equals 3 or 4. And what we need to do is we need to check our answers. Now, previously I used plugging it in and showing all the work. And I told you, you can use your calculator. So we're going to look at how to use our calculator to help us. So let's pull up our calculator. And we're going to try and make this a little bit easier for us. I have the TI-84 Plus Silver Edition with the updated operating system. And what that means is I have new features for it. If I were to hit alpha, y equals or window or zoom you see f1 f2 f3 f4 your new features are located in those menus so let's just show an example if i were to do alpha f1 you would see here a new menu bar pop up you know frac being fraction funk being function so if i were to go over to function take a look at number one it says ABS, that's your absolute value. So your calculator can actually help us with plugging these in. So I'm going to type it in exactly the way it appears. That's what's nice about this updated operating system is I would type in 4, then alpha window to pull up F2. I would choose number 1, ABS, and I can now type in 2x, so 2, whenever you plug something in, put it in parentheses, parentheses, x will use 3 first, and then minus 7. And so that's all inside the absolute value bar. So I'm going to hit the right arrow to get out of it, and then hit plus 5. Hit enter, I get 9, and I should get 9. So that holds to be true. And if I want to make this easier, I can actually, instead of retyping the whole thing in, hit the up arrow, highlight it, grab it, by hitting enter and then go and scroll in and instead of three I want to plug in four and if you take a look it looks exactly like plugging it in hit enter I do get nine and so both of those are the solution to the problem so your calculator can assist you with plugging them in and checking to verify that they both work so x equals three or four is my solution. Now, number three is more complicated. It looks different than what you dealt with before because your absolute value, though absolute value of eight plus x is isolated, it's equal to a variable expression. So what do you do? That's a different, isn't it? It's different than what we dealt with before. And the answer is no, variables represent numbers. It's not different. Understand the concept, don't memorize steps. And that's going to help you with this. Let's just approach it. We're going to approach it the same exact way to show you how, even though it looks complicated, it's easy. You can still do it. So we have a number line first. And let's read the problem using our definition. It says your expression, 8 plus x, is located 2x minus 3 units from 0 on the number line. Well, that does sound a little complicated, but let's just try and make it a little bit easier. 
So that means a plus x is located 2x plus 3 units from 0 on the number line, 2x minus 3 units from 0 on the number line. So let's go, just put a dash, you know, here's 2x minus 3. So that means 8 plus x is located here. So there's one equation, a plus x equals 2x minus 3. But it's also equal to the negative, because you could also go negative 2x minus 3 units to the left. And what that means is that negative affects the whole expression, the negative of 2x minus 3 units. And that is where it's located. And so really, that's the way you set it up. Visually, still may look complicated, but let's look at it algebraically. What you can do is just deal with the first one without the bars there. And we can see that here, 8 plus x equals 2x minus 3. That is one of the equations. Just drop the bars and copy as is. To get the next equation, what you want to do is you want to set it equal to the negative of the number or the expression. And since you're taking the negative of an expression, that expression has to go inside parentheses. So 8 plus x is equal to the negative of parentheses 2x minus 3. So let's solve these separately. What I would do first is I would distribute this negative sign into both terms. So 8 plus x equals negative 2x plus 3. To solve, I'm going to add 2x for it and get 8 plus 3x equals 3. And then I would subtract 8 and get 3x equals negative 5 divide by 3, x equals negative 5 thirds. And then we can solve the next one. Here I would subtract x, and I get 8 equals x minus 3, and then I would add 3 and get 11 equals x, and then I like to flip it around so my variable is on the left side, x equals 11. So x is equal to negative 5 thirds, or 11. Now what we need to do is we do need to check these and we're going to use our calculator just like before. So we pull up our calculator and what we're going to do is type it in exactly the way it appears from left to right. So I have the absolute value of 8 plus x, so I'm going to hit alpha. Remember f2 is where your absolute value is located and I'm going to hit enter. And I have 8 plus x, so 8 plus. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just, you always put your fractions in parentheses. So I'm going to parentheses, negative 5 divided by 3, and close the parentheses. So there's your 8 plus x in the absolute value. Hit the right arrow to get outside of it. And it should be equal to 2x minus 3. So I have to hit enter here. And then I'm going to type in 2 parentheses, negative 5 divided by 3, so my negative 5 thirds, and then minus 3. If I hit enter, I get 6.33333 repeating, and then I get negative 6.33333. And so is this absolute value equal to this? And it's not. We see, though we did everything right mathematically, this answer is not true, and we call that an extraneous solution. And so what we find out from plugging it in is, hey, even though we did everything right mathematically, one of our answers, it's wrong. It does not hold to be true. So we know when we plugged in x equals negative 5 thirds, we got a false statement which means it is not part of the solution. And so let's make sure we check the other one as well then. Now that we saw there's a reason why you're told to check your solution is they cannot be true if you plug them in, even if you do everything right mathematically, it's extraneous. So let's go back through and I can, I'm gonna clear it out so you can practice typing it in. I'm gonna hit alpha F2, choose option one, I get 8 plus x, so 8 plus 11. 
that's not hard. You hit enter, you know that's 19. And so then I'm going to do 2 times 11, and then minus 3. 19, 19, the same exact number, so therefore this one is true. So when I plugged in here, x equals 11, I actually got a true statement. And so that means when I plugged in x11, that is a solution. My only answer for this is x equals 11. So when we went over the approach to use to solve absolute value equations, you're told check your solution. That wasn't an option because you can see now there will be times when you will get a solution that plugs in to give you a false statement. And we call that, I've been saying the word and I'll spell it for you on here. As you can see, we call that an extraneous solution it's a solution that you can do everything right mathematically we have no errors up here at all and yet when you plug it in it is not true so you have to be careful to look for those so i hope you found this helpful on how to solve absolute value equations